GPT Engineer is a new white hot AI agent that can create entire code bases and which has the attention of basically everyone on GitHub right now. You may remember Emmett Hom from my show that I did with him about the Andrew Tate chatbot that he had created. Emmett had actually gone from non-coding to building this bot inside the scope of just a couple months and we talked about that journey. Now along that journey, Emmett had come to some conclusions about where one can learn about the latest advances in AI. On May 5th, he tweeted, there's serious alpha in just learning about new AI tools before they go mainstream. YouTube is a lagging indicator by two to three weeks, Twitter by about one week, GitHub, help forums, and tool-specific discords are at the edge of innovation. Now, given that Emmett had said that, I was particularly intrigued to notice another tweet from him on Friday where he wrote, GPT Engineer is blowing up on GitHub right now. Prompt an AI agent to write an entire code base, plus 2,000 stars today alone. I'll be experimenting with it this weekend to improve my workflow. Now, to me, GPT Engineer represents two converging trends. The first has to do with developers being on the front lines of how workflows are being reimagined and reorganized on the basis of new AI tools. Just this morning on The Brief, I talked about a new survey from GitHub that suggested that 9 out of 10 developers, actually 92% to be precise, were already using AI coding tools at work. This matches anecdotal evidence and basically the presumption that anyone at this point is making. Part of the strategy of companies like Google to catch up to competitors like OpenAI has been to jump out ahead of them in terms of tools to help people code. And in general, there is just a massive discussion about the increases in productivity that AI-supported coding could unleash. So this is trend number one, AI as a tool for coding. Trend number two is autonomous AI agents. At the beginning of April, AutoGPT and Baby AGI really started to smash their way into public consciousness. These were tools that before ChatGPT and BARD had access to the internet could go out and search and gather information. They had long and short-term memory management. And the goal was for them to be able to, when given a task, figure out the set of steps that were necessary to complete that task and then go out and actually do it. Now, that included the potential of spinning up other AI agents to accomplish specific tasks, and that's really what got people excited. It was the idea that rather than just using ChatGPT to help them plan out the set of steps that they themselves needed to take, all they needed to do was prompt using natural language, and some autonomous AI agent would be able to figure out how to accomplish a task and then go do it. To understand just how excited people were about this, all one needs to do is look at their chart of GitHub stars. Stars are simply a way that developers can flag that they want to be able to get back to a repository later to interact with it or learn from it in some way. And by the beginning of May, just one month after this project launch, AutoGPT had more than 100,000 stars. Today, that number is over 140,000. What's more, lots of people tried no-code implementations of AutoGPT-like tools. There was God Mode, for example, as well as Agent GPT. But it wasn't long before the hype wore off, and some people started to think that maybe AutoGPT wasn't all it was cracked up to be, at least not yet. Now, I've talked before about why I think this has more to do with our expectations and the speed with which we assume that things are going to happen, as opposed to any failure of AutoGPT. But what makes Anton Osika's GPT engineer interesting to me is that it takes that same impulse to try to get autonomous AI agents to do more, but puts it within a specific domain, in this case coding. It felt to me for some time that the way that we're going to see AI agents actually come to practice and be useful is by having them focused in on specific types of tasks. The GPT-4 engineer README says, specify what you want to build, the AI asks for clarification, and then builds it. GPT engineer is made to be easy to adapt, extend, and make your agent learn how you want your code to look. It generates an entire code base based on a prompt. Anton, who's the founder and CTO at Depict, wrote on Twitter, Introducing GPT Engineer. One prompt generates a code base, asks clarifying questions, generates technical spec, writes all necessary code, easy to add your own reasoning steps, modify, and experiment. Let's you finish a coding project in minutes. The example in the demo that he gave on Twitter is multiplayer snake in the browser. Use a Python backend with MVC components. The view needs to stream the state to all connected players. Please implement also the HTML and JavaScript necessary to run the game with only the code you generate. Now the next step, and this is part of what makes GPT Engineer interesting, is that there's a process where it asks for needed clarification. So in this case, one, game rules and mechanics. How exactly does the snake move, grow, and interact with other players? Are there any power-ups or special game elements? Two, player connections. How many players can join a game? Is there a lobby system or matchmaking? And then there's a number of other questions, including game state updates, user interface, game controls, game end conditions, code structures, etc. Anton then answers this set of questions to give GPT Engineer the information it needs. 
and then it's off to the races. What Anton's left with is a complete code base ready to go. Now, there are two very different categories of responses so far. The first, and definitely the most common that I've seen, is excitement. This is another one of those projects that to people really shows the possibilities of what generative AI could be. But in this particular domain, there is also some amount of skepticism. Mr. Cadded writes, This is great. I think people are going to be skeptical about it working due to the failure of previous projects like this. But if you look at it as a time saver to producing projects that require multiple files, it makes more sense. Benjamin DeCracker writes, Interesting but very skeptical. Even directly supervised GPT-4 cannot successfully build things currently, like dynamic websites, interactive apps, and games. It can build components which sometimes work and sometimes don't, but it goes off the rails fast. Would like to see tests. Tom Gensler wrote a LinkedIn post about this called Conversational Code, an Exploration of GPT Engineer. Tom writes, Imagine a future where creating a software project is as easy as a friendly chat. Envision sharing your needs and watching them transform into a well-crafted software project without writing a line of code. GPT Engineer, Tom says, is more than just a project. It's a glimpse into a future where large language models like OpenAI's GPT play a pivotal role in shaping requirements and orchestrating software development. Though not yet fully featured, it foreshadows a time when software creation is a dynamic dialogue involving human creativity and machine intelligence. Tom clarifies the process of interaction between GPT Engineer and the user at the beginning. First, the user supplies a text file with the software requirements. GPT Engineer places an initial message to OpenAI's GPT to identify clarifying questions. The GPT Engineer system responds, prompting the user with those clarifying questions. And then this loops until all of the relevant questions are clarified to GPT's satisfaction. From there, the refined requirements are packaged up as system prompts. And also, GPT Engineer adds an additional set of instructions around what it wants to see as an output. From there, the GPT Engineer system receives a response from GPT-4 and then creates the source code files for the software project that the user provided instructions for. Tom shares a number of potential improvements for how this could go to the next level. One, he suggests is iterative development. Quote, any project like GPT Engineer that relies on LLMs is still subject to misinterpretation of a user's requirements and intent. This would be mitigated if there was the ability to iterate after the initial generation of code. GPT Engineer currently does not have the capability to iterate development, but it's easily imagined how it could. Tom also recommends some changes around the workspace project structure to allow for a multi-level file directory organization, and points out that GPT Engineer is currently limited by the context size limits of the input for the LLM it's working with. Now, Matthew Berman, who's another great AI YouTuber and who focuses often on technical implementations of new tools, got GPT Engineer to work and was really impressed by the first outputs a new AI coding partner on the block and it is absolutely incredible. Let me show you what I've been able to do the first time. No edits, no bug fixes, no nothing. This is the game Snake. I have not been able to get any other large language model to create this on the first pass. And this new project called GPT Engineer is absolutely able to do this the first time. I'm gonna show you how to install this, I'm gonna show you how to use it, and you're gonna have your mind blown as well. Let's go. Now this is still an incredibly nascent project with a ton of work to be done, and every day we're getting updates from Anton about new improvements. Anton shared a chart of GitHub stars yesterday afternoon, showing that over the last three days he had gone from around 500 to 12,000, which is already a remarkable jump up. But as of recording this afternoon on Monday, that number was already up to nearly 17,000 stars. As people share what they've actually been able to build with it, I will be sure to share that here as well. All right, guys, that is it for today's AI Breakdown. If you are enjoying this, please like, subscribe, and share. Check out the podcast and the newsletter version. And until next time, peace.